Welcome to the only beginner's guide you'll ever need for PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, S, X and PC. The one piece of advice I always find lacking in these videos is probably the most important of them all and that is how to bridge the gap between knowing what you're supposed to do and how you're actually supposed to do it. So before you decide that you're done with the game, let me try and help you out with a few tips that should get you to where you need to be. And if any of these tips help you, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe. I'm a really small channel and it genuinely helps me out so much but without further ado let's get into the video let me introduce you to a bat i honestly thought that was a bat firstly i'll start with simple things you should know and do fresh spawns if you're new to day z and it's raining or dark i recommend you just quit and find a new server i know this seems like terrible advice but it's really not honestly you don't need that kind of start enough in your life and it definitely makes things more difficult when you're searching through blackness or trying to fight off illness due to wet clothing i don't care what anyone says as a newbie or inexperienced player in general it's not worth it once you understand the mechanics of the game then go for it but i feel like starting off in these situations hindered me when i first started playing it didn't build skills it didn't make me a better player it just wasted time i could have otherwise spent familiarizing myself with the game mechanics a map which was hard to do when i was trying to search for food and drink which brings me on to food and drink the most immediate thing i'd recommend when trying to stay fed is to keep your fruit until the food meter in the bottom right turns yellow in day z the more full you are the quicker you go hungry so it can be to your advantage to keep the hunger and thirst icons at the bottom right around the yellow so you may want to wait 10 to 20 minutes before you consider eating it Food can sometimes be found near small boats, so if you spawn near the ocean, take a quick look around at any nearby boats for supplies. But don't bother running down the coast looking for boats like some people do, it's not worth it, you won't find enough supplies, just search any boats nearby. Sometimes you get lucky, other times not so much, but once you've looked in any closer nearby boats, just start to focus your search in other places, you'll find better supplies. First place you should look is a house if there are any houses nearby go into the houses and search right there spawn rates are low so you should rely on a quick dip and split tactic of each house don't just stop and admire the paintwork if there's nothing on the table beds cupboards or floor or sometimes above the fireplace move to the next house oh and always check upstairs if it has one i'll be telling you what houses you should really focus on later on and what ones are not really worth the look the next place to search is zombies their spawn rates aren't high but you can survive on zombies if you keep killing them but unless you have a weapon preferably a bat axe or similar try not to take on more than one at a time and always try to start your attacks with a running heavy swing or attack them from behind and if you do find yourself facing off with one or even two zombies here's how to fight them keep your block up as you back off wait for them to do their hulk smash which i will show here and then swing before going back to an immediate block to await another smash this will make one-on-one -on -one fights a breeze and eventually you'll be wiping out entire towns but start small and also keep in mind they are still more vicious than ever so if you can't win a fight or if there are too many to fight run into a building and have them follow you in then run back out again and close the door behind you this is a common daisy trick so common that other players may have already locked some in somewhere so always be wary when entering buildings you don't know but last thing about dealing with zombies the best way to deal with them is probably a gun and luckily one of the best guns for this is frequently found on the coast it's called the mark ii this gun has a built-in silencer and the ammo is reasonably common on coastal cities meaning you can end zombies effectively with little to no risk to yourself as a single headshot should take them down every single time if you do find tinned or canned food on a zombie or in a house usually you need one of three things to open them an axe which will ruin some of the food, a knife which will ruin a bit of the food or a tin opener which will allow you to eat all of the food. Just combine the canned foods such as baked beans with one of the previously mentioned tools. Another great place to find everything from cans to fresh fruit are greenhouses. These can sometimes have food in them too. Though again spawn rates aren't really high so it's more of a quantity type of deal. There are also apple, plum and pear trees that grow in some gardens and they can have fruit under them. Mushrooms are in the forest at the bottom of some trees and you can always eat dried or fresh fruit or mushrooms. Just make sure you don't eat anything rotten. My favourite food source personally is wild animals such as chickens which can be killed and cooked using a knife and a fire it's quick and easy just listen out for the chicken sounds and track it down there are also cows and goats and other animals you can kill them all you can eat them all 
Oh, and a pro tip, if you punch an animal and it runs away, don't chase it. It'll eventually stop, but if you take chase, it'll run a lot further. However, and probably the most underrated way of stacking up food is fishing. A simple fishing rod can be crafted fairly easily and is such a good way to make sure you have enough food before you venture inland, but it takes a little effort. It's not as easy as searching a house or skinning a chicken, though sometimes it can be as easy as searching a boat because one can spawn there. Either way, the last two ways require a little effort, but can yield much better results than any searching houses. It's the way to keep fed, freshly cooked food keeps you warm for a while which prevents illness and learning these simple things which I'll demonstrate in a moment will almost completely stop your need for food and will just keep you going for hours and hours on end. Just gonna go and get me some morning wood. Wait, wait, picking up my sticks, using a knife with the tree so I can get some bark and stuff. My bark is on the floor. I just think this log is beautiful. I did actually need the beautiful log. Taking a break from building fire, found some food. Now if you use sticks from bushes with rags, you can build a fire out in the open, or you can just add the giant log to the fireplace like I did there to cook your food. Uh, you can light it with mat matchsticks and also flares, anything basically with a fire. And to make a hand drill, which I'm going to use here, it's just some bark with some sticks. Side note, for the fishing hook, you're going to have to get some animal bones and then carve them with a knife to make fishing hooks and then get some worms and add it to your fishing rod. Using the hand drill to light my fire, which was made with bark and love. Well, actually bark and sticks. And... <gasps> fire! As for water specifically, most city centres will have wells in them. My advice here is to learn a few of the wells near the coastal areas in the larger town so you can refill quickly every playthrough. This can be done by using Eyes of Vive. I will link that in the description. Now one important rule of water, never drink bottled water you find unless absolutely necessary. Pour it out by aiming at the floor and pressing the action button and then refill it at a well. You can get ill drinking from unknown water bottles and it's horrible to cure. Oh, you can find pots and fill them with water. They last a lot longer and they're definitely worth having. Plus you can use them to cook food in. You can also find water treatment pills called water purification tablets. I'll show you where to find them later on and they'll clean any water you have or you find out side that isn't from a well but pipsies and other similar drinks are perfectly fine to drink they're sealed and give you lots of energy find these on boats in houses greenhouses and on zombies it's good to know as well cooked food will always give you more calories which obviously fills your bars a lot higher so always try to cook food you can bake you can smoke each one gives you different calorie intakes you can research them online there are loads of charts Next is supplies. First thing, I consider clothing to be supplies and extremely useful ones. As you look for everything else, you should always be looking to up your clothing, not for style, though certain darker colours can have a strategic benefit. Each piece of clothing has a warmth rating when you either hover the mouse over it or click on it on console. You want the best insulation because a common cold will hit you quick if your temperature drops. Also, depending on the clothing itself, your carry space is increased. Things like army, hiking and police clothing have larger pockets which increase your storage. The weight plays a factor on how much energy you burn so just be aware of that as well. Wet or damaged clothing can provide less warmth but by using a sewing kit or duct tape and combining it with the clothing you can repair the item and potentially increase your ability to keep warm. You can also craft clothing using rags and although it provides little warmth gloves will protect your hands whether climbing ladders, eating with bloodied hands which can make you really ill or pulling down bushes. You also have the ability to make an improvised pair of shoes which can stop your feet from bleeding should your current pair become damaged. But I'd always recommend switching to any boots you come across anyway as soon as possible because they nearly always provide much better insulation. Last point on clothes, if you swim or step in water or if it rains you're gonna get wet and then you're gonna get ill. If you're wet take your clothes off and dry them using a the fire or switch them out for something dry. If you want a quick semi solution and your clothes are soaking wet, take them off and hold them and the option to wring them out will appear which will make them damp. So you'll still get cold, it's just a little safer than them being completely wet. But keep in mind if you are struggling to stay warm, by simply combining a stick with a rag you'll be able to craft a torch and walk around with it giving yourself some form of warmth. This is especially great for situations where you just can't seem to find good clothing with decent insulation. 
Next is items. A knife and an axe are almost as important as food for survival. With a knife you can cut rags from clothes to heal, open canned food, cut sticks and bark to help with fires, skin animals and even shave. The axe can do all of that but the last two with the added benefit of being able to chop down trees for wooden logs and building fires. Now a knife can be found in most places but I found houses are most likely to have them, especially in kitchens. If this fails, their paths and beaches and railway tracks contain small stones you can use to craft a knife by combining them. If you're just starting out, you'll likely be near some tracks so just keep running down until you find stones. It can take a while but they are there. They can be quite far apart but don't give up. Axes and hatchets are in shacks around industrial buildings and in the little sheds around houses and gardens. You can also find an axe in the fire station almost every time if it hasn't been looted. But I stick to looting houses because it lets me loot adjacent sheds and greenhouses covering my search for general items, tools, some foods and one sweep. I will again tell you later on what are the best houses to loot. Weapons now obviously the police station has weapons which is usually a large cream and yellow building with a glass house on the top but adjacent sheds and buildings can spawn similar loot too. Military bases inland have the best weapons but they usually fill with zombies so be careful. Furthermore almost all industrial estates so basically anywhere with warehouses have security buildings and they have some great weapons there to use as well. It's important for you to learn to identify these buildings when you're looking for something specific on your list you know where to check. If you need a tool or an item look for industrial if you need food or general items look for houses if you need a gun look for a military building a security shed or some sort of police building you are more likely to find these things exactly where you think they will be once you get inland including medicines and medicines is next well it looks like i'll get to exercise my medical skills any wound inflicted by another player or infected should be treated with bandages if available, or alternatively a sewing kit or rags. Applying disinfectant to bandages, sewing kits or rags will prevent wound infection, but beware that any damage sustained to these items will remove their disinfected status. Also remember most pristine bandages are already disinfected. If you suffer cuts, you can get wound infections, and they come in two stages. Stage 1 comes with light screen shakes, grunts of pain, and your stamina is slow to regain. To treat this stage hold and apply disinfectant iodine or tincture to your wound stage 2 is late stage infection which occurs in around 20 minutes if stage 1 is left untreated this comes with health loss quick water loss fever and shaky hands while aiming to treat this stage take tetracycline you'll need about four pills over 20 minutes take one pill at a time until the pill icon disappears at the bottom then take another pill until a sickness symbol has disappeared completely if you drink from unclean water sources such as ponds or random plastic bottles you have haven't filled yourself you can get cholera this comes with a fever vomiting after eating or drinking and quicker dehydration only eat and drink in small increments to prevent vomiting and treat with tetracycline supplemented by multivitamins if available empty all water bottles you find by looking at the floor and pouring them out refill with fresh water at wells when possible wells and cans of drink you find are always clean but you can purify dirty water with purification pills or by boiling the water in a pot if you eat with bloodied hands or consume raw meat, you can get salmonella. This causes vomiting resulting in health and hydration loss and occasional grunts of pain. Only eat and drink in small increments to prevent vomiting and treat with charcoal pills, supplemented by multivitamins if available. Always clean blood from hands in water sources such as water bottles or ponds and wear gloves. And make sure your meat is cooked but not burned as labelled here. Common colds and influenza are caused by being wet or cold, such as when your temperature gauge is blue. It can also be caught from other players. A cold comes with sneezing and shivering. Influenza comes with coughing, shivering and a fever. Use masks to prevent spreading. Stay warm with well insulated clothes or fires. Keep away from ill players, including sharing food or drink with them and treat with tetracycline, supplemented by multivitamins if available. Codeine pills can stop coughing temporarily but will not cure it. You can use a thermometer to to tell your temperature if your temperature is above 38.5 you have a fever and lastly getting a heat buff from a fire this plus symbol here can prevent these types of illnesses while it's there entirely which is extremely useful for colder days and early starts you can identify blood loss by your blood symbol at the bottom emptying and changing color from white to yellow to red with each level drop causing the screen to lose color until it's black and white to treat 
You can transfuse blood from a saline bag to regenerate blood quicker over time or from a blood bag to restore it, either from other players or blood you've previously taken from yourself. The blood type always needs to be compatible and a blood test kit can reveal blood types. Having the wrong type of blood can result in unconsciousness, blood loss or even death. Combine a blood bag or saline bag with an IV starter kit to use. Chemical poisoning is caused by eating large amounts of food from unknown food cans, eating rotten or burned food or drinking non drinkable liquids. Symptoms include uncontrolled vomiting causing food and hydration loss as well as slow stamina gain. Treat with charcoal supplemented by multivitamins if available. Gas or toxic poisoning comes after 25 seconds of cloud exposure but will eventually kill. It causes the coughing up of blood, the vomiting of blood, cuts to appear, health loss and eventually unconsciousness. A pox antidote or blood transfusion from clean and compatible blood should cure it. For a broken leg identified by a broken bone symbol a limp and blacking out when trying to walk, apply a splint for 15 minutes. Codeine reduces pain for around 5 minutes, morphine lasts around a minute. This can help you if your health is low. Kuru is caused by eating human meat and is incurable. It can be identified by uncontrolled laughter. Don't eat human meat. Multivitamins can prevent most illnesses by boosting your immune system and are especially useful when you're cold. Keep in mind they are not necessary to cure but can aid in recovery. Epinephrine can revive an unconscious player and provide a stamina boost steadying your aim before you fire, with pox antidotes also being able to revive an unconscious player. And if you're wondering where to find all of these items, they can all be found at hospitals or medical facilities including yellow tents such as these. God, I hope this isn't used or rectal. But before we move on to where to actually find the things you need and what buildings you should be looking in, let me give you a small breakdown of some of the guns you'll likely encounter here. Simply put, the Coast has a few options available. The Mark II, which I mentioned earlier, is a silenced gun perfect for killing zombies with single headshots. You'll also commonly find shotguns and rifles, as well as a Scorpion which is an automatic and even a Glock. The ammo for these guns is not difficult to find and is common in houses as well as police stations. This particular shotgun will need pumping between shots. You can do this by tapping the reload. And like the double barrel, it doesn't require a magazine. However, the guns that do require a magazine always let you place a single round in the chamber, so you'll always have one shot for emergencies if you don't have a magazine filled with ammo. These guns are good for most early gunfights. Just keep in mind that apart from the Mark II, they are very loud and will not only alert other players to your location, but also every zombie nearby. If you encounter zombies and you don't have a silencer, you are best using a melee weapon. If you want to increase your gun skills however, I recommend you search for a PvP server which plays similar to a COD or Battlefield game, where you're placed in a smaller area surrounded by guns you can pick up in an attempt to kill before you're killed. It's a lot more fast paced than regular DayZ, but is a great way to hone your gun skills. If you don't know how to search for servers, I have a full server tutorial in the description that explains the differences between official and community as well as how to use them. Plus I have numerous videos recommending servers for all levels if you're not sure what community server will be good for you. I'm here to kick ass and take names. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Huh? Buildings and where to actually look. Like really, it's all well and good saying look in places for loot, but when you start off there are so many places and not all of them are useful. Okay, so here's my advice. Though I'm sure some may disagree and this only applies to early gaming, here's how I do it quickly. Use all houses to get general supplies, but some houses are better than others. Bits of food, clothing, the occasional weapon and so on, all found in houses. Specifically target buildings which require stairs to enter. They're usually good for loot. Oh, and log looking cabins are good for finding your first gun and other such useful items. Always check above the fireplace as well while you're looking in there. Never ignore the small shed, shacks or greenhouses in gardens or farms, but you should probably avoid large townhouse buildings or centre buildings you come across. They're Pretty pointless. In larger cities where the buildings are all two floors, try and pick out buildings that stand out because most of these don't really have good loot. And when they do, it's so rare it's almost not worth looking in. Buildings with blue doors in these stretches of cities are definitely worth checking. The rest I'd probably ignore apart from what looks like a workshop or somewhere to eat. By the time you've cleared 10 buildings, you could have probably found better things in more special looking buildings. And when in these cities or any town, never ignore the small stalls because they have some really good loot in them. Sometimes for Food, sometimes medical kits, sometimes clothing, sometimes weapons, bullets, they're really good little houses. 
You can check cars quickly as well, including the boot slash trunk. They usually have some cool things in there, though most of the time it's hit and miss. Use industrial buildings, railway buildings, sheds, garages, and especially barns to find weapons, backpacks, knives, hatchets, and similar things. But I'd usually avoid the large warehouses and focus more on the side buildings if you're trying to save time. Again, they do have loot, but they're not worth the extra effort unless you're already passing by. Plus, they usually have zombies in them. Police stations, small guard shacks and hospitals such as long blue houses are an absolute must though hospitals are filled with zombies as a general rule. Fire stations can give you axes and cool clothes but I usually avoid these unless I'm specifically looking for an axe or that type of clothing. Military bases have some of the best loot. The further inland you get, the better the military bases are. Specifically, weapons, grenades and so on. Always loot here but be careful because again, zombies and players frequent these areas and never bother with large tower blocks. The loot is terrible. I think you can find some tents sometimes, but just avoid it. And one giant rule, loot all buildings I said don't loot if they're surrounding special buildings like hospital, police or military bases because they usually spawn similar loot. This all becomes easier the more time you put into day Z. You'll figure out what buildings to go to and you'll just go there. Once you get a general idea of what I've said here, you can just sprint location to location. This will speed up your efficiency significantly, though it's pointless if you don't know where to run. And it's also a waste of hydration and energy. So don't just run everywhere unless you're confident you know where you're going, especially when starting. Sprinting can warm you up a little bit, but it also burns food and water much faster, so be careful. Also, what I recommend to new players who are really, really struggling is focus on one task each spawn. Forget about food and water, just focus on one thing. Maybe build a fire, hunt an animal, craft a fishing rod, learning a town, figuring out building types and what they offer. Don't worry about dying and don't try to do everything in one respawn. It's perfectly fine to spend 20 odd minutes building a fire to die of starvation and then respawn again knowing how to build a fire. It's a way you get confident and, more importantly, proficient in these skills. Everything you'll do, eventually you'll do these things on the fly without even thinking about it. No one started this game being amazing at everything. No one. We've all died a lot. Most of the time from stupid things. Even with hundreds of hours behind you, it's still easy to slip up and die of something ridiculous. But take the losses with the wins. It's normal to get worried about dying because you have cool loot, but that loot can always be found again and the more you play, the quicker you'll find it. And finally, finally, do not give up. People's biggest issue with this game is it takes a little while to get started, but once you do, it's such an incredible game. Don't let the first few hours of steep learning curves break you. Eventually, you'll be spending less than 10 minutes on the coast before hitting the inland, which is where the game actually starts. Honestly, this game is not the first few minutes you're probably used to playing searching for food. That's not even a percent of what it's about. There really is so much more, so just hang in there. I can't even tell you how different the game is once you get past this learning stage. But if your problem is aimlessly wandering around without knowing where you are, this video here on not getting lost should help you out.